In this video, we're going to look at extending what we did in the previous video and start introducing the fact that all animation and games essentially are animation require regular screen updates. We achieve this by using the window function request animation frame. So we're going to add some new methods to the game class. We're going to add a refresh method and we'll add the functionality that to that later. We're going to add an update method and we're going to add a render method. In the onload event for the sprite image, let's just clear everything we've got there. And instead of what we previously had, we're going to add game last refresh time equals date now method. And we're going to spawn a new sprite and we're going to start refreshing the the game. So we'll come to spawn, we'll just add that as a method just there, and we'll come to spawn later. But let's look at the refresh method. So the refresh method has been called here, and what it's going to do is it's going to define what the now time is, which we get from the date object now method and then we're going to find out how much time has elapsed well that's going to be now minus the last refresh time that's what we saved just there initially just to initialize it for the first time and if we're confused about game and this this at this scope here refers to the game class. This in here refers to the image. So that's why we saved game this game equals this there so that we can refer to game. But when we when we're in a method of the game class, this is the game itself. It can be a little confusing that and it's important that you understand that this refers to the current object that, that it's working on. So the method, the method refresh is a method of game. And so in this instance, in this, in this method here, this is referring to the game. This will be dealing in milliseconds. So date now returns a millisecond time. And we want to deal with seconds so we're just going to divide that by a thousand dt which is short for delta time is now measured in seconds obviously it's going to be a fraction of a second but it's measured in seconds that's the important thing and then we're going to call update passing in how much time has elapsed since the last time we did an update and then we're going to render it now it's important to save the last refresh time. So that is going to be what we saved as now. And we're going to create a game constant that we can use in request animation frame. Request animation frame is a browser function that allows you to define a callback that happens as the browser does a refresh of the screen. On most computers that will be 60 times a second. And we use this callback to render our game. And in this we're just going to call a little function that we create that calls ref refresh again. So this will just go in a constant loop but without freezing the UI so it's not going to be a constant loop where we never see anything and the, and the mouse freezes it'll only happen when when the operating system has sufficient resources to allow it to happen so that DT will vary depending on 
what computer it's running on. Faster computers will have more frames per second, slower computers less frames per second. But we keep constantly looking at that, how, how much time has elapsed since we let, last did a screen refresh. So it's a nice simple function and, and essentially that function is going to be the one we use in all our game loops. And in update, which gets called every time we do a screen refresh, we now need to pass in the time. So that's the time that's elapsed since we last did a screen refresh. And we do time since last spawn. If, you if you're carefully paying attention, you'll notice that we haven't defined since last spawn in the um, game object because that's going to be done there. And if you noticed in the onload event, the first thing we called before we called refresh was spawn, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So we'll add delta time to that. So that's the time that's, again, just to, just to reiterate, that's the time since we last did a frame refresh. And we're going to say if this is greater than one, then we call spawn again. So if more than a second's elapsed, then we call spawn this function here this method here and you can iterate through an array of these these days in, in um, ES6 by using of for something in something works for objects and it takes the properties of the object whereas iterating through an array let sprite well in this instance let sprite of this sprites, so this sprites is the array, and each, and that'll go through each one of the array, setting sprite equal to the next one in the in the array. We used to do that by counting an integer value up from zero up to the length of the array, and then defining the object in the array. But that's no longer necessary with ES6. Much neater, and we're just going to call the render method of the sprite. We just need to amend our sprite class slightly to add a x and a y value and we change the render method to use the x, x and the y. So finally we'll look at the spawn. It's essentially the same as we had in the onload event. So it's sprite equals new sprite passing in an options object that includes the context, an x value, which we're going to randomize using the math random method. And it's going to be anywhere across the width of the canvas. And I presume you can, you can guess that the y value is going to be anywhere in the height of the canvas. Change that ampersand to times. We'll keep referring to the width and height, although we're not using them at the moment. We will do later. And finally, we need to refer to the image that this is all being based on. That will give us a sprite. In other words, it's going to set the flower anywhere on this canvas, but it's going to create multiple ones of them. So it's now sprites, push sprite. And we need to set our since last spawn to zero. And in here, just one last thing to do which is set this sprites equal to an empty array. And that gives us everything we need in this. So if we save that and look in here, looks like we've got an error somewhere. Line 26. Oh, I shouldn't have this there, sorry. Remove that, save it again. And now we have flowers being generated randomly across the screen. So we've learned how to refresh the screen at regular intervals. We've learned how to create multiple sprites and we've learned how to render those multiple sprites onto the canvas at various different places. And in the next video, we'll build from that. This video is from my Udemy course, HTML5 Game Development Beginner to Pro. To get the full course at a great discount, pull down the description.